I'm gonna talk about exactly how I was able to hack the VCE system and go from getting a really bad study score in year 11 to getting a 98 ATI in year 12. It was the day that I was getting my results, right? It was 7 a.m. in the morning. Um, it was December 15th, right? Yeah, I even remember the day. It was Friday, December the 15th, and we were getting our results, right? The way that you get your results is on your computer, you log in and then it just comes, all your results come up, right? But for me, since I was just doing one subject, because we have five, six subjects, one of them you do in year 11 or two of them you do in year 11, I decided to do one of them in year 11 um, so I can get a head start on it, right? And the subject which I chose to do was a subject which I was like an expert at, it was Sinhalese. I previously, for four years, I lived in Sri Lanka. From when I was 12 to when I was 16, I lived in Sri Lanka. I learned Sinhalese, how to read, how to write, how to speak. I was so good at it that I did a national exam in Sri Lanka and I got an A for Sinhalese. It's called ordinary levels and I got an A for that, which means that I performed in the top five to 10% of, um, of the whole island. In a country where people speak natively the language, I was able to learn Sinhalese in four years and outperform everyone or most people in the whole country. And people that were living there from when they were when they were born were not able to outperform me, right? So I the reason I'm saying that is not to brag, for you to understand that I'm actually good at this subject and that's why I chose to do it early in year 11. So I was thinking, okay, I'm doing this subject um, in year 11, I start doing it in year 11, I'm gonna get easy raw 45, easy raw 50, right? And for those of you that don't know in Victoria, the way it works is we have um, a score from zero to 50 and everything gets scaled upwards or downwards, right? So Sinhalese gets scaled like a few study scores up, but it's out of 50, it's not out of 100. So I was thinking, okay, easy raw 45, because I just proved to myself that I was able to do really well in this subject. I knew this subject so well, the previous year that I got an A in ordinary level is that I'm just gonna do it for VCE as soon as I go to Australia in year 11 and I'm gonna get a raw 45, easy ATAR booster, I'm gonna get a 99 ATAR or 98 ATAR or 95 ATAR, right? That, that was my goal because I wanted to get into engineering at Monash University. So I started doing single E's and I started studying every single day, going to language school every single week, doing past papers, doing questions. And I did this consistently um, as SACs came up and as tests came up throughout the year, I was doing all right. I was doing pretty well actually. And at the end, I do my exam. I remember thinking, this once I finished the exam, I was like, so easy. I'm probably gonna get like a raw 40, raw 45. I don't even care if I get a 38, 39, right? Um, because it's gonna scale up a few. So I end up, it's December 15th, 7 a.m. in the morning, and you get your results. So at 7 a.m., I log into my account, right? And it says the words Sinhalese. And, it's, and it says an, it has a number which I just glance over. And so I look at that number and I'm like scrolling up and down on the, on the page, I'm trying to find the actual study score that starts with a four. Cause I'm, I'm thinking like, I'm gonna get 40 or 40, 45 plus or like 49 or 50 or something like that. Right, so I'm scrolling up and down on the page and I see, um, and I see 27, Sinhalese 27. Sinhalese 27, what does that mean? I got 27 raw for Sinhalese, does that make any sense? So. After like 20 seconds of me scrolling up and down on this page, I come to terms with the fact that I got a 27 raw for Sinhalese, right? So that'll probably scale to like 30 maybe, but I got a 27 raw for Sinhalese. How is that possible? How did I go from scoring in the top 10% of the whole island in Sri Lanka a year before to then getting a 27? So pretty much I'm average or just below average. Oh, that's average actually. Yeah, I'm average in a country like Australia where there's less native speakers of Sinhalese. People outlearn Sinhalese apparently, and they're better at Sinhalese than me. Um, even though I just proved to everyone by doing it in a country where I was in the top five to 10% of, of the whole island. How does that work? I got a 27 for Sinhalese. I was so pissed off. I was so shocked actually. I couldn't believe it. So I asked for the paper to get remarked. I wanted my study score to get remarked. I was like, oh, okay, it was probably a mistake. They probably forgot to mark half my paper. I was probably lost somewhere. They'll remark it, I'll get a 45 and then I can go on next year to not working as hard because now my ATAR has been boosted, right? Didn't happen. I still, I ended up getting a 27 again. And it was really it was really shocking to me that how did that even happen? Because who do I even tell at this point? Do I call Vika and just tell him, oh, um, I'm actually good at this subject. I, I'm actually good at this subject. I did this subject a year before and I got an A for ordinary levels in Sri Lanka. So that means that I should be really good. I should get a 45 raw. No one's gonna believe me. 
your results that you get, people judge you based on your results or people won't judge you, but your life is dictated on the results you get for VCE or the results you get in year 12 or year 11. Your life is dictated. The thing you're gonna do for the rest of your life until you retire, until you die, if you wanna be an engineer, you wanna do something in business or law or commerce or accounting or medicine, whatever you wanna do in life depends on what score you get, which allows you to get into university, right? And that score is dependent on your what you how well you do in year 11 and how well you do in year 12. So what other form of judgment is there? People are gonna look at your score. Victoria and the whole of Australia is gonna look at your score and think, okay, well, this guy's smart because he got a 45, so let's just put him to a good uni. Or this guy's not smart because he got a 27. And that was my biggest problem with it. Like, I can't tell anyone how good I am or how amazing I was at this subject and no one's gonna believe me. People look at my score, and I was so embarrassed of this score that I got in year 11 that I didn't tell a single person in year 12 um, what score I got. I got a 27, I wasn't happy of that at all. And what does that even mean? If I got a 27 in the subject, which I thought I was amazing at, how am I gonna do methods, specialist mathematics, which is the hardest math, um, physics, chemistry, English? Any of these five subjects I'm not confident in just because now I got a 27 in single year. So the next year, now I have to do something. I have to figure out some way to try and get the ATAR which I need because otherwise I'm never gonna get into uni. I'm never gonna get into engineering. And I was stressing out because the fact that I thought I was perfect at theory and it didn't matter. And then the next year, um, I would probably do the exact same thing as I was doing because I thought all you had to do is get good at theory and do some questions and then go sit the exam right? If I did the same thing next year for, the, for my, the rest of my five subjects, what's going to end up happening? I'm just going to get a bunch of 20s and 30s for my subjects again, and I'm going to get like a, a 60, 70 ATAR. Nothing against people that get 60, 70 ATARs, but I can't afford to get a 60, 70 ATAR if I want to get a 90 ATAR and I want to get into engineering at Monash University. It's the thing that I'll do with the rest of my life. So how do I even do it? Like who's going to show me how to do this? And so I was so unhappy and I was so shocked about that that the next whole year I dedicated my life or I dedicated myself to figuring out the best methods and the most effective methods because I didn't want to be in my books 24 seven. I figured out the most effective methods in order to study and the most effective ways in order to boost your SAC and your exam scores, right? At the end, let me, sh let me tell you what happened. I ended up getting a 97.75 ATAR. I boosted my ATAR from all the other subjects which I was doing. So I was able to get 40 plus in a lot of the subjects the next year. Um, and the, the subjects which I was doing, all the subjects which I was doing year 12 were also really hard subjects, the Asian subjects, they scale really well, okay? So I was able to get to that level, um, piggybacking off the, the, the failure which I had in year 11. But here's a really interesting thing about this, right? I ended up getting a 42 for English. That's shocking for me as, that's as shocking for me as getting a 27 in Singalese. And let me tell you why. Even though I can speak English, my writing is terrible. My spelling is terrible. I'm not good at English. And the reason I'm not good at English is because I, for when I was 12, from when I was 12 to 16, I lived in Sri Lanka and they didn't really um, have the standard of English, essay writing, um, things like that. Speak, like speaking, yes, but essay writing is not as high of a standard as it do in Australia. So I, I pretty much had a sixth grade English level when I was in year 11. Like I spoke really well, I could write, but writing an essay, no, it wasn't as good. Like I wouldn't use amazing words um, and I wouldn't know how to articulate myself in the way actually which I wanted to. And I didn't know how to spell properly and I still got made fun of for having really bad spelling, right? But I was able to get a 42 and I'm still bad at English. But the thing is I was able to get a 42 for English by figuring out the tricks and the tactics which I needed the following year in year 12. So I was able to get a really good ATAR. So I pretty much hacked the system, hacked the VCE system, but I was a victim of it in year 11, right? In year 11, VCE showed me, Australia showed me that no matter how good you are at a subject, it doesn't actually matter. You need to know how to answer the questions in the test. And then the next year, I hacked the system by doing English and getting 42 in English, 42 raw in English, even though you might think, oh, 42 raw, it's not like a 50 raw, it's not a 48, it's not a 45. But I want you to understand, I went into year 12 thinking, if I can get a 30 for English, I would be happy. I worked hard to get a 30 in English, just average, right? I wanted a 30, 31 in English, just so, just so my ATAR doesn't get dragged down because English is a compulsory subject that has to be in your top four. Um, so I put effort into English and I ended up studying in an optimal way to the point where I got a 42 and I was shocked by that. 
Um, I wasn't really shocked by that because honestly, towards the end, I sort of realized that what I was doing was right and the method that I was using to study was right. And the, the way in which I leveraged my time to do the 20% the, the of things that give you the 80% of results, that matters. And the way I, I leveraged my time actually took advantage of that concept, which I will go over in the next couple of videos. But this is the way that I was able to get a 42 in English, right? So I completely shifted like I should have gotten 27 for English and 42 for Sinhalese. That's what should have actually happened, but it didn't happen. And the fact that it didn't happen goes a really long way in, ex in showing and actually um, being able to demonstrate that it doesn't matter if you have a natural ability for something. It doesn't matter if you understand the, the concepts of something. You will not do well in BCE if you don't understand how to study and what to do on a day-to-day -day basis in order to get ahead of everyone else. If you don't have a natural ability for any subject, it doesn't matter. If you know, how to leverage your time and how to study in a way optimally and what to do on a day-to-day -day basis, right? You will get amazing results. It doesn't matter if you have a natural ability.